Monty Nitzkowski, and in today's video, we're going to talk about conditioning the water polo athlete. Now, you know, in truth, we're not going to get into any of the weight training and stretching. We have a separate video on that, uh, but we're really going to talk about in-water conditioning, uh, what the coach should be doing to get his athletes ready for the competitive uh, season. In the background now, we have some athletes going through some basic conditioning. Uh, we'll talk about some of that in a moment, but uh, to start out with, let me just say this. Before an athlete hits the water for water conditioning, certainly there should be some stretching, some, some deck type of stretching to get uh, the body ready uh, to start the conditioning program. Once an athlete hits the water and you're ready to really start with your conditioning, then again, there should be some stretch out type of swimming, a uh, stretch of 400, a uh, stretch of 400 IM, reverse IM, whatever you choose to do. Uh, you know, and there might be some time, particularly for older athletes, where they, they need to just really in the water stretch themselves. Uh, in other words, run through uh, things that make them comfortable. But certainly, uh, with the on deck uh, loosening out and in the in, wa in water stretching, uh, to get ready for in-water conditioning, uh, you're, you're really looking at anywhere from you know 12, uh, 12 to uh, 20 minutes, certainly. Uh, and again, the older the athlete, probably the longer. But don't let young athletes skip the stretching out. We get too many shoulders, uh, uh, too many stress things that, that occur when athletes are not properly warmed up. Okay, now we're ready, and they're in the water and ready to go. Now. Looking at a high school or a college season, normally they run about eight weeks. So let's talk about that as far as water conditioning is concerned. Uh, in a normal season, the first three weeks, certainly the first couple of weeks, uh, that's really where you're building your base, uh, you know, a week of hell week or whatever it is. Uh, uh, you know, you're really doing uh, overload swimming, uh, really building as you would with a swim team. Uh, to start that aerobic component. And uh, with that, uh, again, uh, what you're seeing in the background, you might be going a lot of repeats, kick repeats, swim repeats, you know, hundreds, two hundreds, four hundreds, you know, whatever the coach wants. But the idea is that you're really conditioning the athlete to swim. Now, I'll say this about water polo athletes. A water polo is no fun to play out of shape. Uh, all great teams, Certainly all the athletes are in, in, in tremendous shape. And once an athlete starts training in the sport of water polo or conditioning the sport of water polo, normally he's in shape for, to some degree, for his entire career. And that career may span uh, anywhere from four to eight uh, to 20, 26 years. Uh, it's, it's really a sport that once you start training, you, you really want to stay in some kind of swimming shape because swimming is certainly a major component uh, of the of success in the game. Also legs, we can't overemphasize the importance of leg conditioning, and we'll look at leg conditioning today, but oh wow, legs, you know, that's the base for passing, the base for shooting, uh, your quick starts. Uh, a water polo player really with poor legs is not gonna be a successful player. So to start the season out, uh, particularly in the first two to three weeks, you really wanna build that base with a lot of same type of swimming training that you would do uh, with your with your swim team. Also adding a lot of leg work as you go. Now, as you get into the mid-season, uh, you know, that six to eight weeks, depending upon the length of your competitive season, then things start to change a bit. But uh, water polo is a tremendous conditioner for swim swimmers and swim seasons. It's, it's just wonderful because uh, you know, it really doesn't impact the strokes. A stroke, if there's any impact, can be straightened out, I'd say, within 10 minutes, as far as I'm concerned. But the strength factor, the confidence factor that's built through swimming, and just the change of mental pace uh, is, is so important. A, a polo player coming out of, a swimmer coming out of polo into swimming, uh, you know, should really be ready for a swim season. And so my point there, then, is that you can't lose the aerobic component. We want uh, people ready leaving water polo to be good swimmers and people obviously living swim, leaving swim season ready to go and obviously they will in the swimming aspect and then you just pick up the ball skills. But my point is you can't just overload for three weeks and um, you know then leave it at that. I mean you, when the season ends eight to ten weeks later uh, those people had best be in great swim shape. That's the idea of it. Now 
With that in mind, you just change your emphasis some as you get into that six to eight weeks mid-season. Certainly the emphasis on leg conditioning will continue. That is very, very critical, as we've already said. But now, uh, your week might look something like this. Maybe Monday you're hitting the, the heavy stuff that we see in, the, in, in behind us because you want to keep that aerobic component. Uh, maybe Tuesday, I'm a theme coach. I'm working on counterattack on Tuesday. I may not run any pure swimming conditioning, water polo conditioning drills because the conditioning drills will come from the theme of the day, which is counterattacking. And by the time we run counter drills all day, uh, we may have put in anywhere from three to 6,000 yards anyway. Uh, but again, it's a, it's a nice change of pace mentally for the athletes. Come Wednesday and Thursday, if we're looking at Friday or Saturday games, then we will really be stressing uh, a lighter in, in, in the distance aspect of the swimming conditioning, but really stressing quickness, quickness. Now, and I've got to say that most American water polo players have some sort of a swimming background. That, you know, they're, most or many have been age group swimmers, so they've really got a background for that. As such, uh, the American water polo player tends to be on a clock, probably, uh, as a team, some of the fastest swimmers in the world. Mobility has always been a great, uh, you know, asset of the U.S. player. But quickness does not equate to speed. You've got to, you've got to train quickness in your drills. So in the mid-season, after the counter drills on a Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, we may really emphasize just pure water polo drills for quickness. So we can cover six to eight meters faster than anyone else. We might have the fastest swimmer in the world for 100 meters, but he may not be anywhere near that from six to eight meters starting uh, from a horizontal non-starting block or push off. Uh, and you've got to train the legs for the quick start and you've got to train quickness. Boy, I, I can't, so your drills have got to, to uh, supply both the base and quickness if you're gonna be successful. Now, as you get towards that last three weeks, as you go into that, into your championship season, into the league playoffs, you're probably gonna, just like with a swim team, you're gonna start tapering. You're gonna drop off from those heavy Monday, Monday, Tuesday workouts. Uh, you're gonna be doing not as much in the counter because you're gonna be doing a variety of drills, uh, but you must maintain the stretching. You must maintain the quickness workout uh, as you go through your swimming conditioning. All right. Again, just some of the thoughts as we move through. Now, before we really get down and onto the deck, I might also say this. You know, there are other things that uh, you'll see being used that we won't see today. One might be tennis shoes. A lot of coaches during Hell Week like to put, uh, you know, some type of weight on, on, on their swimmers. Uh, I've never done that. I always like to kind of go back to the old theory. I want them as close to the position that they're competing in uh, doing their conditioning. And so I'll run most of my drills uh, either pure swimming conditioning or pure water polo conditioning. But again, there's nothing wrong with using, uh, you know, tennis shoes and that sort of thing if, if, if you choose to. Uh, bungee cords, uh, surgical tubing type of things where swimmers are working against tubes and maybe egg beatering against uh, a tube or working across for just strength sw uh, swimming is sometimes used too. Mainly, you need to check it out. Make sure you're not getting an overload on anything that you do that's unusual. It's just what I like about doing things in the way the game is played is that, uh, you know, you're using, utilizing and conditioning the technique, techniques that must be applied, and in so doing, you're really reducing uh, all chances uh, of injuries. One final comment, and uh, then we're, I'm going to turn. We're going to watch the people swimming behind us for a moment and then we'll move down on the deck and get some of our pure conditioning uh, drills going. And that is that uh, in the background, you may see or have seen uh, some of the goalies working separately. Certainly goalies have uh, different conditioning needs uh, than field players, and that's very important. And I'll just simply say, we're not really going to get into goalie conditioning in this video, although goalie conditioning is critical to a successful water polo program. I simply recommend looking at our volume one, training the goalkeeper, because within that video, we have uh, 55 minutes of uh, conditioning and reaction drills for goalies. Okay, let me just turn for a second, and right now uh, we are taking a look uh, at people doing no different than they would be doing 
uh, in a regular swim workout. The only difference is this is water polo season, and uh, we are just simply really working to build that base, that a swimming ability uh, that is there so that uh, water polo players are in shape for the entire season. Not in shape, in great shape, so that you know they can look an opponent in the eye and, and just take off. And again, this is played over four seven-minute uh, uh, periods at the uh, high school, senior high school level, uh, as far as the varsity teams. It's played that way still internationally at the collegiate level. There's some talk of going eventually to nine-minute quarters. Hey, you best be in shape. Okay, with that in mind, uh, we'll take a walk down onto the deck, and we will get going with some of the not basic load, but getting into uh, some of the the reaction type of drills for water polo, both with or without and with the ball. And we'll look at some leg stuff, and then we'll finish up with some fun stuff that can work in very well. Thank you. Okay, in the water, uh, we are going some pure water polo conditioning drills now that the base has been built. Uh, groups is numbered off. They're going full length worth of work. And you can see they're going on their stomach, followed by rotating to their back. So uh, stomach to back type of drill. Uh, the idea of getting to the back is to get eye contact with the goalie. Now they're going what we might call bursts of four, uh, going hard for four strokes, starting with a jump start stopping and then taking right off again. The coach can or does not, he doesn't have to whistle this either. You can tell him bursts of four, bursts of three, bursts of two, uh, however you want it. But again, so you get enough swimming in, they're going the full length on this and he has them numbered off by threes. Now, again, just a variation on this, a difficult one with this many players in the pool, but just what we'd call some slant or diagonal break swimming. Uh, just uh, you, you want to really work on a lot of change of direction and change of direction can be you know 180 degrees or it can be 90 degrees or, or in this case 45 degrees but uh, uh, just working variations now he's got all of the, the group down at one end and as I say he's got them numbered into three groups what do we got now this is just bursts of two this is a real good chance to, uh, to work on the lunge kick uh, or the start to give you the movement into quickness to cover, you know, that four to six meters really fast to get the jump on the ball, uh, jump on your uh, defender, or in turn, if you're a defender, a jump on the offensive uh, player. Uh, but do a lot of burst work uh, as we're looking at there. All right, now here's, again, stomach to back, uh, just a repeat of this, it appears. Uh, but again, it looks to me like they're going four in the stomach, four in the back. And you can count this, these series out, give them numbers, two in the stomach, two in the back, three in the stomach, three in the back, four in the stomach, four in the back, whatever you want. But swimmers need to really uh, practice getting from the stomach to the back and back again. Now this looks to be a just, uh, okay, it's a little messed up in the water there. You can see a little confusion on the part of the players when they repeat this in the other direction. They'll have this pretty well worked out. Uh, but uh, what he had asked for, what we're not getting, and this is again why we practice, this would be a 90 degree right-handed square. There you see that player in the middle come off very nicely with it. As he gets his group down to the other end, uh, you know, he will make them better understand what they're to look for. All right, here should be a square to the left, if I'm correct, there it is, and it should be 90 degrees and then right back off on that stomach and attacking right down uh, the field of play. But as you work on your water polo conditioning, you should be working in the areas of the game, the skill levels and technique areas uh, that have complete transfer to the actual game. And certainly the square out in a counter attack uh, is a vital part. And uh, uh, here they were practicing the square out. Now uh, they're just simply shortening their stroke up and what they're going to do is do what we'd call a complete change of direction here. And they're doing it based upon the numbers. If you look at the far wall, uh, they're going to the far set of number numerals. They'll reverse back to the next set and then reverse back and go to the far end wall. Now, as we progress through this conditioning video, uh, we will see all types of change of direction techniques or drills that can be utilized. But this is just simply following markings on the side of the pool. It's a good way to do it and a good way that the coach doesn't have to be constantly uh, uh, whistling the drill. 
And uh, these are all drills that uh, can be utilized with, with, without a ball. Now this is just working on a, what we are in a complete vertical. Uh, this is a static uh, high elbow uh, set of 10. Now they shorten this out a little bit and, and it, it should go anywhere from 10 to 20 strokes as fast as you can go. You don't want to paw your way forward. You want to stay right with your, your legs underneath you, hips underneath you, high elbow. See how they're going like that? And that's just a little bit too short, uh, too, too short a duration in the vertical there. But uh, what they're doing is going a high turnover uh, followed by a sprint to the other end. Here they come then, bing, and off they go and sprint to the other end. That's called high elbows, and it's a good drill. You really want to work players to get quickness to have them really work on turnover. As competitive swimmers, they tend to stretch out, and in water polo, uh, you want that quickness built in, in as well, and uh, so the stroke is shortened up, uh, and you work on, you know, on that. Again, here's just an example. This is max head up swimming, just full max head out sprint, and you want to do a lot of just end to end full sprints, head up so the players can see uh, where they're going. And you can vary this and bury your head at the end of it and, you know, uh, uh, go full sprint for a while with the head up and then a full sprint to halfway and then bury the head or, uh, you know, down the full length of the tank. All right, now, this is a drill that's oftentimes used by goalies, but this is just four strokes out, lunge left, lunge right, lunge straight up and take off swimming again. And here comes our group three. We'll see it. There they four strokes, lunge left, lunge right, lunge straight up, and sprint to the other end. Another good uh, drill, just uh, you know, going from the horizontal to the vertical, and that's what water polo is all, all about. Uh, you know, being able to be both swimming and then get to the vertical and so on. All right, now here's a little uh, variation on this change of direction. This is called add two. We go two strokes forward, one stroke back. Then we add two, go four strokes forward, one stroke back. Six strokes forward, one stroke back until you get to the other end. Again, it saves the coach a lot of whistle blowing. You're not going to be hyperventilating on the side. A variation of this would be two strokes forward and then add two, add one. Add four, add one, which would mean you'd be going four forward, two back, six forward, three back, and that will just add a lot more uh, distance to it. But uh, that's what we call the add to uh, change of direction uh, drill. And I think it, it has a lot of merit too. Okay, now, uh, with again, you notice we're really doing a lot of these things numbered off by threes. You're going to number off by the number, you know, the size of your team and the such. We're having them sprint from about the two and a half, three meter line out to half court and back in. And this would be done in three sets of five by the number. In other words, number ones go, you're in and out as they come back in, then you get your twos go, and so on. In the first set, and, and each group would go five times. We're just we're shortening this obviously to show you different variations. And here's a variation: they're out to the middle on their stomach, back on their back. Okay, here the twos go, and they sprint out. And this is all high turnover, full. They should be really be working hard here, uh, and again getting the practice both on their stomach and the back, and uh, which is 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 so vital uh, in the sport. All right, now we'll get them back and we'll come back with our number ones again and we'll show another variation. But I repeat that these are done in sets of five. We're only showing one set each, but they would go uh, until each group number had gone five. All right, here is a variation. They kick up at uh, the half court line into the vertical, wait for the whistle, get back on their stomach and sprint back. And here comes the twos go, out they come. Okay, to the vertical, get those arms up, 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 armpits out of the water, use that egg beater, there's the whistle, and sprint back on your stomach, and three is ready, go. And I think you see what we're doing here, and this would again be a set of five. Here we're going from the horizontal to the vertical, and then back to the horizontal again, and you really want to work this in uh, to your water polo conditioning drills. Now I'm going to simply move them out, and this will be the final thing where we really work high turnover, and we're just simply going bursts of two. And uh, they just go two strokes out, you'll see it here, two strokes out, two strokes back. Two strokes out with the twos, two strokes back. Threes, ready, go, two strokes out, two strokes back. You really want to spread them even a little more than that in that drill, uh, but a set of five of those just getting tremendous uh, reaction and quickness with the change of direction. Now here's a variation. Uh, this is follow the flag drill. 
and uh, if the white flags up they are to coming back towards the wall they left if the blue flags up they continue towards the far end now this is being whistled uh, but you could do it just from uh, reaction just from the flag itself and if you watch the coach there okay now he's got it in the neutral position which calls for egg beater okay he's got that white up so they should be moving to your left on the screen a white flag is up to your left and now as we watch this next group I think we can really see uh, as he makes it more complex this is a great drill both for conditioning well for conditioning change of direction horizontal to vertical flag readout watching that referee see the blue flags up so they're gonna go okay now the whites up they're gonna go to your left blues up they better be coming oh no he's still got the white up so they're continuing on your screen to the left let's watch this final group now okay he's got it in the neutral I blues up so he'd be advancing to the right on the screen whites up he should be to the left on the screen and he takes them right back to the wall and here comes that next group out. Here, let's see how he reverses the flag, but the color stays the same. And that teaches you to read the flag. All right, white's up, so you'll be going to the left. And a great reaction drill on a great conditioner as well. And uh, uh, you can, as the coach, try to show a bit of trickery as he is here, as he see how he really is working that flag. And you find out, because players need to know three things at all times. Uh, the referees call, in other words, the flag. They don't need to know where their opponent is. They need to know where the ball is. But one of those three things is the color of that flag that's up with that referee's whistle. And you can't, as we voice override this, you can't hear the whistle. Uh, but you can imagine every time uh, you see them moving uh, quickly in one direction or another, you know there's a whistle. But you wouldn't even have to, you don't have to whistle this. You can just simply go with the flag color. Blue uh, to your right, uh, white to your left. A great drill and one that uh, I, I really like. There's a variation of this too where you can just put your whole team out in the water, stand there and just blow the first whistle and uh, then have and just leave one color up but the, the direction the flag is pointing is the direction the players would go. In other words it doesn't have anything to do with color but at the end of a practice maybe uh, a good time to work that where uh, and that way then you can point it straight up for egg beater, you can point it left, right, or you can point it back towards you or away from you so that you get them going uh, literally both the length and the width of the pool in a uh, quick sprint type of action. All right, here now is just simply some press-ups. Again, uh, you don't always have to be always in the, in the weight room or the mat room uh, to do some of these drills. They're just doing press-ups. Uh, um, uh, to work on that upper body strength and uh, after a lot of heavy work uh, it's a good conditioning thing with the partner now holding the legs they're doing sit-ups uh, the uh, should be all the way up to the knees with the chin and the hands should be clasped uh, behind the head all right now this is an interesting drill and it'll be hard to pick up but we'll explain it and and, it, and this would be done in sets of five and this is just strictly what we call a max out drill. We're asking each of these swimmers to go to, to the really 110%, not 100%, to 110% until they can't maintain it. Now, you see those players falling off, some of them. Others are going all the way to the wall. Some of them got maybe 35 yards out. Uh, some got the full 50 yards out. Now, let's watch this group number two and see what happens. But as you go through a set of five, because we'll go with the number ones, the number twos, and then the number threes, as you come back again with the number ones, now see there's some of them uh, in the twos that are just going 25 yards, that's as far as they felt, and that's fine. You want to go to your 110%, as soon as you're 100%, you ease back. That one player felt uh, he could get out there for the 50 yards. Coming again hard here, let's see how far they go. There's your turn, and yes, we're getting two coming back. Let's watch and see. Uh, the one in the upper part of the screen now is starting, you know, and the other one is continuing to the end. Now, as they go set two, set three, set four, obviously they're going to be going a shorter distance. Uh, but the idea is 110, and when they can't go 110%, just stop and swim to the end wall. All right, now we've added the ball to conditioning drills. And we saw a little of this on the, the 101 drills, but this is a, 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 a better angle to really watch what we're doing. We're numbered by threes, uh, ones and threes at one end, uh, twos at the other, ones start it with the ball. We're going just regular dribble, just regular dribble uh, coming down uh, with the ball. 
and now we've switched it and we go to push dribble and the push dribble is a good way to just to, you know develop the hands soft hands that sort of thing it isn't something you'd be utilizing a lot in the game but now we're combining ball conditioning uh, with actually physical conditioning and uh, Although we're repeating this a little bit back from the 101, uh, this is one of the few drills that has really major carryover value, and that's precisely why we're taking a look at it. You see them just working on that push dribble. All right, we should be back to the number ones, and now we're going to have them do what we call walking the ball. Now, they're walking it in what we say their dominant side arm. You've got a left-hander in the near side here with the left hand, right-handers working in the, with the right hand. Now, as they get better and stronger, if you just want to work on handling the ball, you can have them go uh, with their offside arm. But they're stroking it through underwater, just pulling it through. Again, conditioning, but also conditioning uh, with working the ball. Here are the fellow in the lead here in the near end, and well, both of the lead players walking that ball beautifully as they've got it uh, between um, you know, their, their wrist cupped against uh, their wrist itself. Now we're doing a very important one, what we call carrying the ball. And notice they're looking left, right, and behind. And now, uh, where before we were working on the swimming conditioning, you can see now we start getting uh, some leg work, uh, as we mentioned in the prologue to this uh, video, how important leg conditioning as well as swimming conditioning is to the water polo athlete. And as they do this, uh, they're leading, it's like they're penetrating at the end of a counter attack and they're looking left, right, and behind. They're being aggressive that last seven meters, taking it in with the idea that it's going to end with a shot. Now we vary the same drill, continuing to work on the legs and also on ball handling. And every time you see them changing hands with a ball, I'm simply blowing the whistle uh, on the deck, signaling that the ball should be changed. Now, as we bring another group back and look at the same drill, I'll pick the speed of the whistle up, and now, along with the conditioning, we really start working heavily on ball handling here, and simply being able to be, if not equal between your left and right arms or hands, at least having skills with both. And, and water polo players really need to work towards this. You're not going to necessarily become ambidextrous, but you will improve uh, both hands, and, and that is a major, major help uh, in this sport. All right now, we're going dribble to halfway and then burying the head and dribbling with the face down, eyes open, so you could watch the legs of the opposing goalie, uh, whatever might be in front of you, but eyes open underwater. But again, just working on controlling that ball, and a lot of times you'll dribble with the head down just to pick up that little extra edge of speed. But a good thing to work on conditioning and also on conditioning uh, with the ball. Okay, get another ball down here and we get ready for our next drill. And this is going to be simply pick it up and shoot it into the water in front of us. Now, this is a great opportunity to have players work in a counterattack on getting the ball up from underneath so it'll come up quicker. It's a good drill to practice getting the ball up from underneath. And if you look out there, you will see some picking it up underneath, others picking it up on top. But I would really emphasize and force these players to pick it up sometimes underneath, sometimes on top, so that you can work on both those skills. Both those skills have a place or a part in water polo, uh, as we had discussed extensively uh, in the 101 favorite drill video. All right, now uh, we are really into leg conditioning, but leg conditioning with the ball. We work the egg beater with the ball clamped, uh, two hands behind our head, elbows to the outside, and armpits up. In other words, really trying uh, an egg beatering straight ahead, the shoulders squared and straight ahead. Uh, uh, you know, real important uh, drill uh, to build leg strength. All right, here's a variation. Now we've got the elbow straight. We're hot potatoing the ball. As you can see the players near, player near to you doing a pretty nice job with that, just keeping it at full arm extension, keeping the ball live, uh, working it back and forth. There's all kinds of variations you can do on these drills, and it's good to throw variations in at the players to uh, break the boredom as they uh, work their way through the conditioning drills. Another variation, we clamp the ball behind our head, we start forward, and with every time the coach whistles, we make a quarter turn to the left. Now you see one player there, the third player up, he's got the ball in front of his head, makes it very hard to do the drill. It should be clamped right behind your drill or to the top of your head. 
uh, whichever you prefer. But that's a quarter rotation to the left every time the coach uh, blows his whistle. Just again, another variation uh, to the drill. Now here's another conditioning, leg conditioning drill, but it also uh, combines a lot of skills. And it's nice when you can put these two together. And uh, if you've got a large team, this is a pretty nice drill as well. Uh, they're working uh, the, the short pass in the center, and they are all egg beatering and working uh, to, uh, on the screen to the left, uh, near sideline to the left, far sideline obviously to the right. And then when they get to the end, they just simply peel back and go and take it out another four to six meters and force a much longer pass. Now, when you get it spread out like this, you want that ball dry. Uh, as you move back and forth, it becomes a great, you know, passing drill, uh, secondary warm-up after you've done your shorter passing, uh, but you get the nice leg conditioning with the movement. It's an excellent drill, and, but you want the ball here dry, and then as you come back down the middle, as you can see, as they return now, you could be working on any kind of pass you want, push passes, left to right, uh, you know, whatever you want to do. So a uh, nice drill because you're combining both uh, leg uh, conditioning uh, with some ball handling skills. And it's, it's, you know, it's nice when you can get combination drills uh, going because these are certainly key aspects in the development of, of the skill level and the conditioning level of the game. Okay, now we'll switch down to the far end and we'll look at another variation of, uh, again, of a passing and uh, conditioning type of drill. Players start out, there's three pair out there, and they're going left to right, so should be going right to left, left to right. They should go 10 as hard as they can go, then they should make a hard move to halfway, uh, passing and, uh, you know, it's staying in the vertical working and now you see them starting to move towards halfway They continue to pass once they get to halfway uh, they should stop or near halfway and stop and resume and get the fast 10 passes left to right right to left and now the player in the middle is throwing some fakes in there you can do whatever you want uh, to vary uh, the drills the near side are just going quick left to right right to left and uh, well, and again one's going left to right there we go you can see it can be varied however, but they get 10 passes in, now they'll make the move down uh, to the end, and they will do the same thing again. And these are simply combo drills of leg conditioning, which we've said is so critical to shooting, passing, getting the jump starts, all of these different factors, and then they finish up uh, with the 10 passes there, and of course the next groups have started to come. Now. Uh, continuing with leg conditioning and uh, taking it back to the horizontal and uh, on a kickboard, just exactly, at least the start is what you would look for in swimming practice, and that's just doing a lot of sprint flutter kicking. Uh, water polo players need to be able to kick. Now, they're doing what we'd call a combination, and, and the whistle's being varied uh, by the coach on the side uh, with one whistle. Uh, he has them do what we call snow plowing. Look at the snow plow. See, they turn that board sideways, so they're literally snow plowing the water, water plowing, and creating a lot of resistance on that water, making uh, it a lot harder to kick. And then with a whistle, they're back to the normal kick again. Now, it's the same drill, only changing to what we now have is horizontal egg beater. And you should practice horizontal egg beater. And again, they're following the same drill. With, with, with each whistle, they change from the normal board position uh, to what we call a snow plow position to create uh, greater resistance. Now, uh, these drills can be done not the snow plow, but just the simple kicking drills uh, can be done with and without the board, both flutter and egg beater, and, pro and should for variation. And if you're flutter kicking uh, without a board, you can kick with the arms in front and lift the head straight ahead for a breath, or you can vary it and kick with the arms to the side and just simply rolling up uh, for a breath. Again, with the egg beater, you can, here we are still on the board, and you can really see them working now, really hard resistance in that snow plow. Uh, they're plowing all the way now, and then when they get to half court, 
they take that board out and they go from the horizontal egg beater and clasp the board to their heads and go to the vertical egg beater. Again, just another good variation of working on what is really the key kick uh, to water polo, and that is the egg beater, which is an alternating side breaststroke, alternating leg breaststroke type of kick, which creates the base for passing and creates the base uh, for shooting. And of course, is the key kick for the goalkeeper. That's his uh, uh, lifeblood in there as far as a kick is concerned. All right, now we work on the egg beater in a different drill, and this is just simply pairing up, uh, putting arms uh, against the other player's shoulder and having uh, both those players resisting against each other try to move each other back and forth across the pool uh, using the egg beater. And if they stay st stationary, you know, we've got a pretty good matchup on the legs. And nothing ever done so that you're taking any chance of injury, uh, but just simply creating resistance in the water. Uh, again, you saw it in the horizontal paired up. Now we look at it in the vertical. And the players underneath, the idea is that they're being pressed down is to keep the head above. And the players on top should be just gradually building over 10 or 15 seconds, gradually uh, building the pressure uh, on the player in the vertical. Again, now we're doing what we call leapfrogs. And just uh, coming over the top here. And uh, you try to keep that head up. Uh, as we go over the top and, and, and come across. And these are fun variations which uh, you know, really do create uh, some good uh, leg uh, conditioning. And we just reverse it in the other way you know, and go back and, and, and do this three or four times just to let the players have some fun with it. Now we're in our famous what we call the Hungarian leg drill. Now if this was run throughout, uh, you would see it uh, you would see this drill really run for almost 40 minutes, and we're just taking it through real quickly. But each one of these things, as you see, there was both arms up, then they come down and relax and recover. Each one of these would be done for a minute. Now we got the left arm up, the left arm would be up for a full minute. And now we will reverse it, and the right arm would come up, and this would be run uh, for a minute. This is what's called a Hungarian leg drill. I wouldn't recommend it. I recommend doing this every day and using up that much practice time, but uh, you know during the base training early season and 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 uh, you know a few times during the course of the season, uh, it's it's just a good a good way to spend a lot of time. Now we got the left arm up, and you can see they made quarter turns to their uh, left. In other words, rotating towards their left arm. This would be run for a full minute. They're back to that position. They're down and resting, but no one for the 45 minutes or however long this would take uh, touches the wall. All right, now we've got the right arm up. They just reverse the process. They make the quarter turn uh, uh, to, to their right. Okay, and again, you've got to take that little bit of come down rest there in between, and then we will change it again. Uh, but as I say, all of these are in one minute. Uh, segments as, as, as they go through. Now you can see the coach showing what he wants now. Then you're going to do a reverse type of arm up. Uh, just lots of variations to this drill. They start with the left arm up, rotating a quarter turn to the left, but then they reverse the arm each time. They're still rotating, but they're going left arm up, right arm up, left arm up, right arm up. All right, now the right arm's up. It should come down. Left arm's up as they quarter turn now to the right. Just another variation, uh, but you're getting, as I say, 30 to 40 minutes of, of egg beater kicking, and uh, you know, players are really starting to get an egg beater skill and in good polo shape to be able to do this. And uh, this drill is, as I say, it's called the Hungarians. Uh, I was brought back from Europe, and uh, uh, European teams spend tremendous amount of time working on their legs. All right, in this minute, we have a variation where they're lunging left, lunging right, and uh, then they'll reverse it. Okay, now they do. They end it with the both arms up, and uh, there's a lunge right, lunge left, and both arms up and down. Try to keep them in a straight line and spread out so people aren't running. Okay, there's a lunge left, straight up. You can create all kinds of variables in, in, in here, uh, but getting a lot of, of, 
of hard leg work is, is, is really the purpose of this drill. And this thing will end uh, now uh, with both arms up and the players would just kick until they can't keep their arms up any longer and then as they drop them they would swim to the side of the wall. But you're looking depending upon, you know, and I wouldn't suggest doing a full 45 minutes to start with, but you could do variations. You can run them rather than a minute, uh, 30 seconds, uh, whatever you like to do and uh, to shorten it out uh, and then build them up. All right, now here's some fun stuff. Let's take a look at this. Here's a little relay. Uh, this is what we call a berserkal relay. Uh, they're doing a upside down butterfly or on the back butterfly to start it out and players as you go through the dog days uh, Sometimes in the conditioning it's good just to do something now. Here's the corkscrew swim uh, They've got a corkscrew all of the way back in the second leg now you can time these things keep a school record for the berserk you're never going to see it internationally or nationally but just to get through the dog day sometimes and break the conditioning up uh, here's uh, you know straight forward swimming, but now they've got to throw some somersaults in here as they go, and you can set the number of summers, uh, somersaults that they have to do, and they come back off this final turn in this 100-yard swim, and they've got to come back swimming on their stomach with one foot held above the water, and you can see the players experimenting to see which foot uh, they want to get up. Uh, makes sense? No, not really, but it does when it comes to uh, breaking uh, boredom, uh, monotony, uh, as the season progresses and coach you have to you really got to be careful everyone's going to listen to you all of the time during the first three or four weeks but you know then as you get a little bit later it gets tougher here's a here's a 25 yard individual medley they've got to throw all four strokes in there somewhere just in 25 yards and you see them going from one thing to another and it doesn't count if they don't get all four strokes in there now here's the good old relay uh, uh, type of thing and uh, we're just with three teams here. You can teams. You can do this through all kinds of skills, run relays, and it's fun for the players. They like to do this, but you're developing conditioning. Uh, you are developing ball skills, but you are also breaking uh, boredom. As I say, particularly in that mid six to five to six weeks of your mid season, where you need some variation in there to keep interest up. And this relay is just simply out the halfway turn and back in. Uh, you can keep a score among the three teams and when it's all over with, you know, maybe one team pulls the goals or whatever, you know, you can have whatever kind of prizes or penalties you want for finishing first or last. But this can be done in so many different ways. It can be done by carrying the ball, by walking the ball. You can come out and come back in the uh, uh, horizontal or vertical egg beater, whatever. Now here's a real fun one. Uh, they sprint 25 yards, pick the ball up and throw it at the coping and that's the idea is to catch the lip, the top lip of the coping and get the rebound. Now the rules are very simple. If the ball goes out of bounds as it did with that mid lane there, you climb out of the pool, walk, don't run, pick the ball up, walk back and jump in, uh, you know, there at the end where it went out. And here they come with a dribble and let's see if anyone else can catch that. We've got the nearest team is leading and you get all the practice to dribble again a pretty conservative this is a lot harder than it looks to catch that good rebound but the fun of it is a team can be trailing and two of the players might in a row there he misses it mess up on the deck oh he got lucky it came back in so he doesn't have so far to go but you get a couple on a team in a, in a row uh, that might be in last place and if they catch that lip that ball can rebound three quarters of the length of the pool if it comes right off the upper edge of the gutter there. Now there's again, there he catches it, same team, and obviously they're going to win this thing. In this drill, you're getting all kinds of great skill work of almost 50 yards of hard dribbling, practicing picking it up on top as that player does there, or if you want to, underneath, hey, there's a good rebound, and they're almost going to catch that team on top just with that uh, rebound off the lip, but you're practicing dribbling, uh, you know, getting from the horizontal to vertical and back, and, and just a lot of the skills uh, that you want to work on besides just having a good time. Uh, players uh, love this sort of thing to break uh, the monotony. And uh, at any rate, conditioning of the water polo athlete, you've got to have that good solid base swimming type of conditioning, the sprint quickness training, you got to work the legs, but have some fun with it too, coaches, because the players love to have fun with their sport. 
These last few minutes, we've had a chance to look at a number of conditioning drills uh, for the water polo athlete. Uh, coaches, just as we said in 101 favorite drills, uh, you know, you need to design your own drills, particularly in the quickness uh, area and leg uh, building areas. Uh, be creative, I think that's really important. Just a couple of final comments. Uh, we didn't go into a lot of detail on the base swimming because most of you as coaches have come really up through swimming. You know the repeat interval type of workouts that are important to swimmers and important to water polo players as you build that base. I, I will say this, that in some of the shorter sprint work in the heavy conditioning area, uh, I used to do a quite a bit of head up butterfly. as You saw that in the introduction in the background. Um, either flutter kick fly or just head up fly is good I think for water polo players but I will caution you that if you have any players that have had shoulder injuries sore shoulders I'll just let them swim through in front crawl and don't have them uh, butterfly but the base and, and again I, I'll, I'll say this I think uh, we as coaches the first three weeks you've got those players attentions uh, no matter what you're doing so uh, you, you know you can do the overload work then, and uh, you're going to have them following right along. Last three weeks, uh, you've pretty much got their attention to, particularly if you're going into the championship series. Uh, but it's that mid-six weeks, six to eight weeks there that I call it the dog days, where you want to have a lot of variations and back off you know, some on your heavy base conditioning and get into that quickness, uh, leg work, and, and some of the fun stuff uh, to keep the players uh, interested. Now, one thing is that I, we failed to mention in the leg work, uh, uh, another good drill that I would like to mention is just doing some lunge kick uh, one lap sprints where maybe you tell them start on your left side, left side down, and just do your jump kick or your lunge kick and take one hard stroke, stop, repeat it, repeat it, repeat it, repeat it as, as quick and as fast as you can go, but taking a stop so you stop, start from a dead stop uh, each time. When you come back, reverse it. Drop, if you've had the left side down going down, put the right side or your right hip down uh, coming back. So you're practicing starting on both sides. And then finally, uh, straight ahead. Just square up and use that jump kick and lunge straight ahead like you're doing a lunge block, say, in a defensive play. All these things are really important. We didn't demo that, but I, I did a lot of that type of work uh, as well. But keep your season interesting, as I, interesting and as I say, uh, when you're really looking at conditioning water polo athletes, once you've built that base, a uh, lot, of, lot of that quickness type of thing, and work that ball in there too so that you're getting skill training as well as conditioning. And finally, as we said right at the end of the actual in-water stuff, have fun. Uh, the athletes like to have some fun and come up with some fun drills uh, to really keep it interesting. Get your players in shape. That is critical. I've always said that a team that is in great shape and can play good defense uh, can probably hold their own against most teams even if, if they don't have high offensive skills to begin with. Those will develop more slowly but boy you got to have them in shape and they need to play great D. Hey listen good luck to you and with your polo programs. Thanks.